All right, here's an example where we're given a polynomial and we're given one of the zeros of the polynomial and we're supposed to use that to find all the other zeros. So the first big thing is to apply the factor theorem. Since we know that negative two is a zero, then the factor theorem says, and actually let me write factor theorem here because I want to be real clear about this logic because you're going to use this a lot. Um, so the factor theorem says that x minus negative 2, or, well, that would be x plus 2, is a factor of that polynomial. Okay, and I won't write out any more complete sentences in this video, but I want to be real clear about the logic there. Okay, so since negative 2 is a 0, then x plus 2 must be a factor of that polynomial. But still, looking at this polynomial, it's not obvious how x plus 2 would be factored out of that. Um, but okay, so what we do know is that p of x does have x plus 2 as a factor. And then, so there's some missing uh, factor here. So that this is equal to 3x cubed plus 5x squared minus 3x minus 2. Okay, but we'd like to find this missing factor, because if we could factor out x plus 2, then we could then focus on uh, this polynomial over here and find the zeros of that smaller polynomial. If we're starting with a, a cubic polynomial and we factor out x to the first, then we know that um, whatever this polynomial is here, it's going to be degree, uh, degree 2, because we had degree 3. We're factoring out one power of x, so this is going to be degree 2 in this missing piece. So what we want to do is solve for that missing factor. And we could do that by dividing both sides by x plus 2. That way this would cancel here. So divide the given polynomial by x plus 2. That will allow us to solve for this missing, this missing piece. And so you could use either long division or synthetic division. Uh, synthetic division is usually quicker. Uh, and I guess I'm going to squeeze that in here. So it's, if we're dividing by x plus 2, we put opposite signs, so put negative 2 in the box. And then the coefficients of p of x, so 3, positive 5, negative 3, negative 2. Skip a line and draw a line. Bring that first number straight down, so there's the 3. Let's see, so we multiply negative 2 times 3, and so we get negative 6, oops, negative 6 here add these numbers, so 5 plus negative 6 gives us negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 gives us positive 2 here. Add these numbers, so negative 3 plus 2, that's negative 1. Last, multiply negative 2 times negative 1, that's positive 2, so we get a 0 remainder, which we should get a 0 remainder if x plus 2 really is a factor. So now we know that the polynomial p of x is equal to x plus 2 times this, well this is giving us the coefficients anyway, and we know it's degree 2, so it's 3x squared minus x minus 1. So now to find the remaining zeros, we can just set that quadratic equal to 0. If we set this factor equal to 0, x plus 2, then we get x equals negative 2. We already knew that was a solution, but I'll circle it anyway. So now we can set this quadratic function equal to 0. And here we'd be looking for um, all right, the zeros of the quadratic, I'm sorry, I keep having to pause this video and restart if it seems a bit disjointed. Um, so first we might think about factoring it. If we were going to factor it, we would want two numbers whose product is 3 times negative 1. So the product is negative 3, and the sum is negative 1. There's, there's no two such uh, whole numbers that are going to do that. So um, we would have to use the quadratic formula to solve this. Um, to solve this quadratic equation. Uh, if you look at the next slide in the PowerPoint, um, you'll see the solutions. I'm going to run through that real quick. Let's see, so we had 3x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. So quadratic formula, x equals opposite of b, that'd be positive 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that'd be 1, minus 4 times a times c 
all over 2 times a. And so that's 1 plus or minus, under the square root, you'd have 1 minus negative 12. So you're actually going to have 1 plus 12. I'll just write this. I guess I'll write that step. And so that's 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 6. So we started with a degree 3 polynomial. There are two solutions here with that plus or minus. So that's a 6, I'm sorry. Uh, in addition to the given 0, which was negative 2.